Hey everyone, Mtash here, and I wanted to give you some tips that I wish I knew before I started Genshin Impact. These can help you whether you're a beginner player or even an advanced player. I'm at Adventure Rank 30, I know there's people further than me, there's some pro gamers out there, there's people on other servers, but I wanted to give you some tips that I wish I had known right from the start. Now, this is going to be my first tip, and I honestly think this is the first thing any player in the game should do. There's a website with a Genshin Impact uh, interactive map. Just Google Genshin Impact interactive map, and it will show you all the different things in the game, between shrines and teleporters and all these different things. But the big one is you want to do the Animoculus and Geoculus. Literally, right when you start the game, you can go and hunt the majority of these. Some of them, like this one way out in the water, you actually need an ice team that you can literally freeze the ice to walk across there. That's the only way to get over there for the most part. And, you know, that might not be accessible right at the start. But the majority of these are going to be very accessible for your team. I would go and get these as soon as you can and turn them in because they give you stamina, which makes exploration even easier. And it gives you a bunch of experience. Now, in the other region, once you advance a little further, do the exact same thing. You want to get all of these, and if you do get all of these, it also does a secret quest, which I made a video on, to get a 5-star artifact. But this is incredibly good experience. You need to do this. This is probably the, the most important thing in the game. So what I want you to do is I want you to open up the other map, and then on your map in-game, I want you to actually mark all the locations down. Click there. Put that down, click the one here, put it on the map, and then I want you to go to each location and look high and low. I want you to clear them out, and once you know that you got it in that location, click it, delete it, and you know it's done. That way you don't miss one, because if you do miss one, you're going to spend hours searching and trying to figure out where the hell it is. Don't make this mistake, because in the other region, there's 131 of them. There are caves. There are high peaks. It is going to take you eight hours. I'm not even kidding. It might take you 10 hours to try to find the last one. If you look at my stamina bar here, I've got more than double than when I started the game. So if you're trying to sprint around, you're trying to explore, getting all of these is a benefit for everything. You can be stronger in battle even. You know, a character like this, where you can wind up and use your charged attack, I can essentially wind up and do my attack two times longer because I have a bigger stamina bar. I can just hold this thing and do way better DPS. So uh, I, I would recommend that you check this out and, and get her done. Elemental Resonance is a button that I guarantee a lot of people have never clicked. They have no idea what this is. By matching up multiple people of the same element, you get different passives. One of the best ones in the game, if you're trying to explore in the early game, like most of us were and are, is Impetus Wind. And it decreases your stamina consumption by 15%, increases movement speed, and shortens your cooldowns. This is a great little passive if you're trying to explore. This is my main exploration team that I'm using it on, but there's some other great passives too. Uh, if you have two fire characters, you get a 25% increase to your attack damage. What? That's insane. If you're looking to get DPS, there are some amazing little combos in here. Make sure you're looking at your elemental resonance. You also get more energy from elemental particles. So as you're using abilities, you can see these particles coming towards you. If you're the same element as another character, you actually get increased amounts. So if you're looking at this team, Venti and Jean pretty much always have their ultimate abilities or their burst abilities available, which is great. Now, the other thing, too, is characters have passives. Now, a lot of them might not seem that amazing. If you look at the talents of this character, hers is Chef. Uh, any attack-boosting dish, when cooked perfectly, has a 12% chance to receive double the product. That's great if you're crafting and cooking, which we'll talk about later. But then there's people like my boy Razor, who gives a huge 20% decreased stamina consumption while sprinting. So, if you pair this with something like Venti, who gets 20% uh, reduced stamina costs for uh, soaring around on the glider, you have an amazing exploration team, so make sure you're checking out those passives. Now, another big thing is if you want to do optimal damage in your party, obviously you want to max out everyone, but I highly recommend you focus on one character. 
You could focus on maybe two if you have enough resources, but in the early game, if you can get one cracked character that's ascended before everyone else, they can carry you. An example of this would be Fischl or Venti. These are great little characters that have amazing burst potential, and what I would do is level them up, use your resources on leveling them up, and ascending them as soon as you possibly can. Obviously, you want to bring everyone up as you, you know, progress through the game, but someone like Fischl can literally carry your team. If you've got someone like Dyluk, if you've got Venti, if you've got any of the 5-star characters, I would build around them and make sure they're leveled up first as a priority. That also means their weapons. You want to be leveling them up and enhancing them and ascending them. I can't quite do it yet because I don't have the materials, but you want to get their damage up as soon as you possibly can so that they can keep dishing it out and carrying your team. The other characters can support with elements and all that stuff, but one character absolutely dominating is going to be very, very strong. That goes for artifacts as well. If you've got a character that you like, you want to make sure that you're actually maxing these out. If you're trying to enhance an artifact, you can use all the different materials from 1 star to 3 star. And there's essentially a finite amount of these right now until you tar uh, start farming some of the dungeons. But if you're going to be leveling up artifacts, they should be on your main character. Because the difference between a base level artifact and a maxed out one is insanity. Let's just look at this artifact for an example. Now, you can see at just level 5, the attack damage is more than doubled, and it's also going to get another attribute bonus that will give it crit or health or something else. You need to level these artifacts up because this is going to be one of the biggest reasons why you're not doing damage in the game. Your artifacts need that. You also want to make sure that you're choosing artifacts that scale with the character. If you're looking at Chi Chi, if you look at her talents, her abilities scale off of attack. The healing is scaling off of attack. So you want to build attack damage on the character. Any of the artifacts that you're picking should have some sort of attack percentage or flat attack. But that's not the same for everyone. If you look at someone like my girl uh, Barbara, her scaling is off HP. Let the Show Begins will scale off of max HP, and her Shining Miracle will also scale off of max HP. So if you want a kick-butt Barbara, you want to scale her up as high as you can. It will make her heals incredible, and she will be a literal tank. Like, literally unkillably uh, strong. The heals will make it so you can keep your entire team alive, so pay attention to the scaling. Go to the talents, click on your talents, and see if it says anything about scaling. If not, uh, any stats will work for the most part, but if they're your main damage dealer, they probably want some attack, or if they use abilities a lot like Venti, you probably want elemental uh, ability damage, stuff like that. Now, once you get to a higher level, there's expeditions you can do, and I highly recommend you start doing these as soon as you can. Take some of your weaker characters, Lisa is one of my weaker characters, so I send her out all the time mining. I also do it for the 20 hour timer so that you can get the most rewards possible. If you were trying to get this amount of rewards, it would require quite a bit of farming. And because I've been doing this every single day that I play, I've actually got a ton of materials. Crafting weapons requires prototypes and a lot of materials. So if you want to try to get some four star weapons for your characters to level up, then you should make sure that you're doing those expeditions. But what if a 4-star weapon wasn't necessarily better than a 3-star? Now, if you look at this Dragon's Bane, it has a base attack of 41, and it's got some elemental mastery. So my attack will go up, and my ability damage will go up. But if you look at this bad boy right here, the base attack is 39, and it has crit rate. Meaning, if I'm auto-attacking with this character, which you do quite a bit, you can get some amazing abilities. But the other thing, too, is refinement. So if we look at this Dragon Bane at base refinement, it gets 20% bonus damage to uh, Pyro and Hydro affected enemies. Now if we go to this White Tassel, it gets 24% increased damage with normal attacks. That is a lot of damage, but because with blue weapons you can get multiple uh, you know, repeats and copies of them, I've now made this one refinement rank 5, and it's getting 48% more damage. Now, even though uh, this will scale up and I can, I can level this weapon up and it gets some high base attack, this is actually most likely a better weapon for uh, this character. By leveling up this white weapon, I will do more damage because of this huge boost to the normal attack. 
If I can max out the refinement ranks, yes, it will absolutely catch up. But there are some amazing blue weapons in the game, so don't be afraid to level them up. In my case, this is actually going to be my replacement for right now. Also, did you know that you can level up your basic attacks and your abilities? And this is one of the biggest boosts to damage in the game. If you look at my normal attack on Razor here, I can actually level it up to level 2, giving me some great boosts, like 6% more damage. And if you stack that with all the different damage buffs you're going to get in the game, that's a lot of damage. It's relatively cheap to do. You're going to amass these materials as you go, but different characters are going to use the different materials. There's a good chance that any of your main characters, you're going to have these materials to level them up uh, as soon as you ascend. Now, if you start getting into the, the late game here, um, you might start running into some cost problems, but overall, uh, that's once you get into ascension like level 3 and 4, uh, you should be trying to max these out as soon as you possibly can, and you're going to make your character much, much stronger. Food and recipes is an important part of the game. Many of these recipes you can get from quests, but also by going up to the food vendors and just straight up purchasing them. Make sure you do because there's some great ones like this one that reduces your stamina costs and it is very strong. But if you're looking for the cream of the crop, you want one of the best food items in the game, Barbados Ratatouille. This food item gives you 15 minutes of reduced stamina consumption. This is amazing if you're going to be exploring, which I know many of you are going to be doing. And it's very easy to get this and you can get it right at the start of the game. No fighting, no nothing. Let's take a peek. Head over to Stormbearer Point. It's right here on the map where I'm standing and there's going to be a, a little nun there. Talk to the nun, exhaust her dialogue, and she's going to give you the Barbados Ratatouille. This is amazing. You should be always using this food item uh, while you're exploring. I didn't get it until much later, unfortunately, but you should do this now. Also, while you're exploring and you're running around talking to people, always do the second dialogue option. Now, not every single time, but more often than not, if you choose the second dialogue option, it leads to you getting a quest item or reward. I don't know why it's always the second one, but I would say 80 to 90% of the time, if you choose the second option and there is an item available, you'll get it. In this case, I got an Ascension material that's great. Now, if you're cooking some of the more advanced dishes, they require different resources, and in some cases, they need some prep time. Now, there's going to be a quest that says to process food, and you probably are not really sure where. It's right here in the cooking menu. If you go here, you can process different foods. So you can take wheat and make flour. You can take meat and make sausage, or salt and meat and make bacon. If you do some of these things, you can not only get some uh, achievements done and some experience from the game, but you can use these for some more advanced dishes that give amazing bonuses. So make sure you're doing that. Cooking is great. And also, the resources to buy it are right back here and in the other city. Now, this alchemy table is really important when you start getting into the late game because as you play, you're going to get a lot of lower tier materials. You can then infuse them or, or craft them and alchemize them into higher level materials. Something like this, which is a much higher level uh, material for ascension. But even if you go down here, there are things like arrowheads, which you get from basic enemies that you can turn into the next tier. And so as you start moving up into levels, you can take these lower tier materials and actually get stuff that's useful for you. If you've explored around the map, like I said, you're going to get a ton of these sigils. Now, there are some great items that you can purchase. These are some ascension materials for weapons that you can definitely use. But there's also stuff like constellation pieces for your main character. You should focus on this because it's going to be a nice boost to damage, especially if you're a free-to-play player. But you can also buy something like the Northlander Sword prototype, and you can start building some weapons and things like that. There's also a bunch of Ascension materials that you can buy, and as I said, you can um, craft these into uh, the higher tier stuff with the Alchemy Table, which is amazing. Make sure you're using these. There's no other real value or use for these. Now, let's go look at the other shop really quickly. Now, the other region has a lot more chests and things to find, so you're going to get more of these sigils. But I would recommend you buy these crystals for your Geo uh, main character. There's four of them here. It's over a thousand, but there are tons and tons of them. You can see I've spent literally like 2,000 uh, of these sigils on here. I've got a bunch of upgrade materials. Make sure you're using them. There's no other real value or use for them other than this. So 
get her done. You can get some awesome Ascension materials and things like that. As you can see, I am adventure rank 30. I'm going to rapid fire give you some tips here to level this up because it's very important for your progression, but it slows down to a snail's pace. Once there's more regions, this wouldn't be as much of a problem. Unfortunately, there's only the, the main two regions in the game, but in a couple weeks, there's going to be another region, so you're going to get a nice spike uh, of adventure rank once that releases, which is going to be really exciting. But let's go over how to level up. So, obviously, main quests, these are great. Do them as they come unlocked. You're going to have to rank up to unlock some of them. That one's pretty obvious. But I do recommend if you're going adventuring, you're doing these things, make sure you're doing a quest at the same time and just clearing out the chests and different activities while you're on your way there. That way you know you're kind of carving your way through the map efficiently. You're getting these quests done. But the big one here is commission quests. Let me just show you this really quickly. On your adventure book, uh, this is unlocked at like level 12, I think you get your book. Uh, commissions are a daily quest that you get. And some of these take like 13 seconds. You teleport there, you kill the enemies, and it gives you 225 rank. This is incredibly good experience. And once you do all four of them, you get 500. If you miss one of these, if you don't do one of these and you don't get this bonus and this bonus, you're literally missing out on the fastest experience in the game and you're going to pigeonhole yourself into being a low rank forever. I'm telling you, if you're not doing these every day, this should be the first thing you do when you log in so you don't forget. I'm telling you, it's an absolute must, especially when you start getting to the higher levels. This is one of the main ways to progress. Now, the other thing is domains. Now, there's a bunch of domains, and you can farm these for experience. You get 100 each time you do it, and it costs 20 of this resin. Now, this resin generates over time. It increases over time, and you can use some items uh, to increase it. One of the ways you increase it is with actual Primo gems, and you get so many of these, I would recommend that you use these each day, and, and you get that experience each day, and you just spend the 50 Primo gems, because, yes, you could use that on character rolls down the road and everything, but I honestly think that, you know, adventure rank and getting that experience long term is a little bit more important. As you replenish it with Primo Gems, it gets more expensive. So maybe the first two you could do. But the first one for sure, I think, is definitely worth the value because that's another uh, 300 experience that you can do every single day for a relatively cheap cost. So if you look at the map, you might not have really noticed these things, but there are little dungeons around the map like this. Now, some of these you might have already done, and it won't say that there's a reward, but this one I just unlocked at level 30. Now, this gives 500 experience. It gives me one of these keys. It gives me some Primo Gems, and this is a relatively easy mission to do. As you level up in the game, there's going to be a bunch of these all around the map. Make sure you're going back to them and doing them because they're typically super quick and one of the biggest boosts to your experience. They're faster than uh, the, some of the quests and give double the experience in some cases. So make sure these are getting done. Now, wishes, whether you're spending money or you're playing free to play, are an important part of the game. There's different banners that have different rewards in them. If you look at this banner, there are increased rates of getting Venti and official uh, Zhengling and Barbara. Now, honestly, I would recommend you spend all of your resources that you get on doing this banner right now. You can get other characters down below, you can see them, but there's upped rates on those particular characters. Now, here's why I would say this. Barbara, literally one of the best healers in the game. Jai Ling, great little DPS. Fischl is nutty, and Venti is one of the best characters, if not best character for uh, crowd control in the game. So if you're going to be making wishes, you might as well be getting these characters. Now, here's the one thing I want to say, is you will get a lot of repeat characters while doing this, because the rates are increased on these characters. So if you're searching for new characters and different characters, you can use a different banner. But there is some value and benefit for getting multiple of the same character, and I want to show you that. Each character has a constellation. If you end up rolling the same character, you get another passive ability on this constellation. Some of them are pretty boring, but some of them, typically at the end, are incredible. This extends the duration of my summon by two seconds and gives some extra damage on top of that. And so, if you look at my team here, I've got Fischl, I've got Shang Ling, and I've got Barbara maxed out. They've got maxed out constellations, which gives them a lot more value. 
This one, if a party member falls, it will automatically revive them and it will give them their HP. So that's insanity. Really cool passive to have and there's value in that. Getting a big cast of characters is really, really good. But if you can just get one cast of characters, that kicks major butt. I would recommend this for free-to-play players because chances are you're not going to be able to max out a bunch of characters if you're not spending any money. And so you might as well focus on this core group because they're so damn powerful. Now, if you want to be summoning characters, you can use your Primo Gems on buying Intertwined Fate. That's the one you're going to want. Uh, you're going to get Acquainted Fate and stuff through the gameplay. But there's another thing too. As you do your wishes, you're going to get these Star Glitters typically. You can use these to then buy more fates and do more wishes, but also you could even buy a character. So if you save these up, you can actually buy Razor, which I did. He's a great character, uh, has some good DPS. That's something you might want to consider because it's kind of a guaranteed way of getting them. But the other thing too is you get Stardust. Now there's a couple of different like upgrade items you can buy and you do get quite a bit of this. So if you wanted to ascend some characters and use these, you could. But way down here, uh, it, it's, it's turned off because I've already used it. I've got a few recommendations. So you can buy these fates once a month and you get five of them and they're relatively cheap. These are great. You should buy these to summon more characters, but you can also get experience and these ores. Now I bought like, I think, I think 60 of them or something like that. This is a whole bunch of experience and I have been amassing a, a, a bunch of this. So if you're low on experience, this is another, uh, another thing you could buy as well. In your inventory, there is a quest tab and some of the stuff in here is just books and junk and it doesn't really do anything. But some of the items actually can lead towards other quests. There is a note here that gives you a location of a secret quest and a secret boss that you can fight. And so you might want to take a peek in here every once in a while to see. There's even some quest items that pop in where if you go to this location, you can complete the quest or advance the quest. So make sure that when you're talking and doing these quests, you take a peek in here every once in a while and see if there's something that you can do. Another tip is if you ever see something that's glowing, if you see any stone tablets, always interact with them. They can typically give you some little hidden quests for chests or legitimately hidden quests with great rewards. If you see something that looks a little sus, suss it out and check it out and make sure you actually talk to it to make sure you get access. Stamina is really important in this game. So getting as much as you can is great, but there's a couple of tricks I have that are gonna save your life. So swimming around is constantly going to drain stamina and if you go fast, it's going to drain more. Now there might be a situation where you're really close to land, but you're gonna drown if you don't make it. I have one little tip. If you use activities that make you go faster, typically you drain a lot more stamina. If you're trying to climb something that's really short, you might want to jump up it. But if you're trying to get something really, really high, you actually don't want to do that. With swimming, with climbing, anytime you use the sprinting or, or the swimming faster or the jumping ability, you actually use much more stamina and your distance traveled per stamina point is worse. If you're doing something quick, it makes sense, but if you're trying to swim a far distance, you actually don't want to. Yes, it's more time consuming. Yes, it's kind of slow, but it's better than dying and resetting your progress. You want to make sure you actually make it there. Now, as you're exploring, you're going to run out of stamina and you might think you can make it to that other mountain while gliding, but you might run out of stamina. Now, falling from this height would surely kill me. And if I realize I am going to run out, there's something that you can do that will save your life. And that is the lunging or dropping attack. Before running out of stamina, just do a attack and you will slam down to the ground. Even from the highest mountain, it will typically save your life and you will take a little bit of damage, but if there's enemies down below, you're going to crush them. So maybe you can get some free kills, but save your life, don't kill your characters, don't waste all your resources uh, trying to do that, and you're gonna be winning long-term. Also, while you're exploring, you might see a random flower on a ledge and think, eh, I don't need it. Yes, you do. In a lot of cases, these are ascension materials, they're upgrade materials, and you're gonna go have to farm for them anyways. I honestly, even though it might not seem efficient to go do every little chest, I mean, even if we look in this area, there's a chest here, uh, there's a secret there, there's another chest here, right? There's a lot of different activities that you can get distracted with. Do them. 
because at some point you're gonna run out of main quests to do you're gonna run out of quests and you're gonna have to come back and do these so while you're searching for uh you know or making your way to quests while you're searching for geoculus and animoculus or whatever the hell they are just do all the stuff do all the activities in the area because it's gonna have to get done eventually and you're gonna get more experience from it you're gonna get upgrade materials i highly recommend I you do it get distracted get it done now you might notice on this map i put a little marker for a mining now this cave is a great cave with a ton of crystal now i mined this yesterday and it hasn't respawned but it will eventually if you find an area with a bunch of resources, make sure you mark it down so that you can come back to it later. I'm going to show you an example of this right now. So this is an area I farmed a day or two ago, and I've come back and all the resources are back. For the amount of time it takes to mark it down and then return here, it's great. You're going to need materials like this to upgrade many of your weapons and get all the experience that you need. And so there is going to be a point in time, especially as you get to the higher levels and you start getting multiple characters maxed out, that you're gonna have to mine. <laughs> you're literally gonna have to go become a miner and get a job. So find these locations, mark them down on the map, and be happy that you did it. Recommend you also have a team for fighting, doing bosses and quests, and then an exploration team. I wanna explain why this team is so damn good. This is like the ultimate team. I could probably level up Amber, but she's just doing puzzles anyways. So this team is getting better stamina consumption, increased movement speed, and better cooldowns. He reduces stamina while gliding, he reduces stamina while sprinting, she's for doing puzzles, and this little team can do most of the puzzles in the game and explore in a, in a great way. This team is more for doing combos and fighting, and it's great to have both. Now this is my final tip and is one of the biggest tips in the game. This is adventure rank and it is your world tier. At level 20, 25, 30, 35, you're going to increase your world rank which increases the level of the enemies you're fighting. It's also typically going to give you some big rewards. Sometimes there's an adventure rank quest, but this is huge and I want you to pay attention. This item that you get right here is a fragile resin. You can use this to replace your original resin and it gives you 60 points. Now, if you look in my inventory right now, I have uh, a whole bunch of these. Uh, where is it? 17. So that's a lot of resin and I'm hoarding these for later on in the game. And I'm going to explain why. If you look at your map and you look at many of the different activities, um, they require you to use resin to actually get the rewards. If you go into these domains and you want to farm for these resources, it's going to require 20 resin. Now, this resin replenishes over time, so you want to make sure you spend a little bit of it so it's always replenishing. And you can use Primo Gems to replace this, which I recommended earlier in the video. But once you get to the end end game, once you're at the much higher levels, these rewards get much better. You can start getting some of the best set pieces in the game, such as this one for Venti. And if you want to get the best gear, five star gear, if you want the, the, you know, the best stuff, if you want to farm for these ascension materials that will literally change your gameplay, you need to make sure you're using this resin properly. I highly recommend around the level 30 or even 35 adventure rank you can start using this stuff a little bit more uh, aggressively because you're going to need a lot of these materials to progress through the game anyways. And it, it, it's a lot of experience, it's one of the only ways to, to get experience once you start getting into those higher ranks, so you can't be too cheap about it, okay? Now another thing is if you start running out of experience for your character, one of the best ways to get it is actually these ley lines. You can get 13 to 14 of these things. Uh, it costs 20 resin. You don't get as many resources, but this is a good way to farm experience for your characters. Not so much adventure rank. I mean, it is a quick hundred, uh, just like everything else. But if you're trying to level up your characters, this can be a good way to do it. Now, this bad boy right here, the Spiral Abyss. Let's teleport there. I need to show you this because this is the final part of the game. And this is going to be Game Changer. So the Abyss is multiple floors with some unbelievably good rewards. It gets harder as you go. The first four floors, they are one team. So you can take your stacked, cracked team. But once you get into floor five and beyond, you actually need two really good teams if you want to progress. It's going to go floor to floor, room to room, and it's going to switch between your teams. Now, the rewards for all of this is incredible. Even for the first four, well, all of them, 
you get 100 Primo gems for getting the max rating for each floor. And so this is essentially 2,400 Primo Gems. You can do a 10 wish and a couple extras. You can use these for buying stuff in the game later on if you want. But on top of this, there is a bunch of rewards. You can see here, you're getting experience for your characters. You're getting items to upgrade. You're getting some crafting materials. These can have different, um, different artifacts in them. And once you get even further down, you start getting five-star artifacts, even more experience. This is incredible. Now, after you beat this, this is gonna take a long time. You can go into this one. I don't have it unlocked yet, but this is something that resets weekly. So you wanna to try to get to the end game. You wanna to try to get to this because this is gonna be one of the main things that you farm long term. There's different blessings that will happen that buff and debuff your character. It's kind of like a, a roguelike. I'm gonna jump in really quickly uh, just to show you kind of what you do. You would pick a team, bop, 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 whatever and you'd pick a second half. Bop, 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 bop. Terrible teams, I know. You go in, and you can actually choose uh, like a, a passive bonus for your team on each floor or chamber. And so if you have a really good attacking team and you want to, to smash, you might want to go with some extra attack. Or maybe you want to be a little bit tankier. You can do that as well. Pick the thing that seems the most valuable to your team. Are you getting one hit a lot and you can't beat the chambers because you keep dying? Maybe you need defenses. Do you need to just kill the enemies faster? Maybe you want more attack. But you should really be doing this as soon as you can to get some awesome rewards, awesome experience, and hopefully make your way to the, the final end game and, uh, and, and get yourself the best of the best. That's pretty much it for this tips video. I plan on doing more and honestly, it would be great if you guys shared some of your favorite tips in the comment section below. Is there something I missed? Is there some crazy thing that helped you in game? I would love to know and I'll make more videos to help the community. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to share this video with your friends that are playing Genshin Impact. Make sure to subscribe for more because I plan on doing a bunch of videos this month and that's it for me. Thanks again, see you soon, bye bye if you're looking for energy during your big Genshin Impact grinding, check out Advanced.gg. This is the best energy drink on the market. Advanced.gg slash MTash. Use code MTash for 10% off. If you want 5% off a headset, Astro link down below. And if you need a new gaming monitor, view Sonic Elite. Links are down below. They've got some amazing monitors. These are the monitors that I use, and I would recommend them to anyone.